Hi, I'm Shorish Kumar, lead drums. Hi, this is Babla, the bassist. Hi, I'm Adil, I'm the lead guitarist. Yo, this is EPR, I'm the vocalist and frontman of Underground Authority. And about him, let me ask him. Yeah, this guy's name is Kuntal, he is the rhythm guitarist of our band, and he's the man who comes up with all the weird effects in the band. We were playing in separate bands. We were uh, competing against each other. We were always, we always wanted to play music together from the start, but somehow oh, we kind of figured that it wasn't possible because we were already in different bands and we were doing quite well separately. So what happened was uh, me, Sauri, Shanadil, me, Sauri, Shanadil, were playing together, and uh, we wanted to kind of form uh, a different band which does a little different music. This guy was primarily the only rapper in town, and this guy, and this guy. We loved the way he moved on stage. We loved the way he had this aggressive a attitude, energy. a lot of energy. I mean, and, and, and he raps pretty well. One fine evening on 3rd April, which is EPR's birthday, and we were sitting down and we sat him down and he had, had the same smile, he was not talking, and we, after a lot of consultation amongst ourselves, we said, uh, Would you like to play with us? And the guy says, Yes. One shot. One shot, and he's like, That was easy. And that's how Underground Authority formed. Underground authority primarily means something that, that emerges or rises from nothing. And that's primarily what we did as far as our music is concerned, as people are concerned. There are every guy who has held a guitar for the sake of rock music, rock and roll music, whatever, they have gone through a lot of hardships, a lot of um, a lot of um, primarily um, resistance. When you pick up the guitar to play this form of music, no matter where you are, who you are, the first thing First thing the grown-ups, the wise people tell you is that you shouldn't do it, it's going to hamper your career. So underground authority is nothing else but normal people rising up to a level by doing a, a choice or an extension of art. And it can be anything, it doesn't need to be music and it's just what we're trying to say. And you, that's what we sing about. In one word, if you want me to explain that, uh, then the sound of my band is, uh, I would say, hip hop new age. Well, for me, uh, the music Underground Authority creates is influential, very, very influential. Uh, well, for me, the music of Underground Authority is like this humongous release where every pent up uh, emotion as well as aggression and expression just comes out in one big package. Well, since our band has been having this motto of making music to express and rather than impressing people, so I would say my band's music, the genre of our band, it would be something lyrical, protest poetry. Yeah, he says the same for him. Yeah. We were running short of songs and our shows were becoming lengthier. So we needed to put in songs and we had decided right from the beginning that we don't want to play covers of other rap rock bands or other rock bands or other hip hop groups because we wanted to keep our sound as original as we can. So uh, we are big fans of A.R. Rahman, we are, we love his music and especially those 80s and 90s songs like Urvashi and Hammama which really hit which really brought him into the forefront in the in the Hindi music industry, uh, in Bollywood basically. So we really like those songs, they're fun songs. So we thought why not, you know, make cover versions of those, putting our own stuff into it. Uh, and it would be like something that people can, people can enjoy, people can have fun. Yo, let me make it straight. This is Urashi version 3.2 by UA. Yeah. Yo, Tamil Nadu lady straight off to Calcutta Now for Jenna Sunapoli in Kunja Kalo When I'm on the stage of Dark Guitar and the Bass Kavitana Ultra with the new way to close the case and turn the page We come from different corners of our days Speak in different languages, greet in different ways Salam alaikum, what a success we have got No much cut and wrong, we have to stay as now Namaste, come on Urvashi, Urvashi, Jai Urvashi, Umli Jesse
started writing about issues that everyone can relate with. When we started writing our songs, stuff like what teenagers have to go through, what adults have to go through, what kids have to go through, and uh, you know, political issues, world issues, like we have a song on racism, we have a song on corruption, uh, we have a song on escapism, stuff like that. Things that everybody has to deal with. And uh, then, you know, people started liking our writings, our songs, and stuff like that. Somebody from their side uh, got to know that we do this version of A.R. Rahman's Ulvashi. So I got a call uh, from somebody saying that uh, we are coming for this competition. It's called India's Got Talent. And at that point of time, we really, we weren't following the mainstream industry of India music that much. We were into our underground rock kind of a thing. So we, some of us didn't even know what the show was about. We went for the auditions. Uh, when they called us, we went for the audition because we thought, what the hell, let's just go for it. We went, we played Urvashi. It was a good response. Uh, but at the same time, we weren't really banking on it because we were focusing on, on our English originals, uh, not really the cover Hindi music that uh, we've been doing uh, right, uh, or what we played on India's Got Talent. We weren't banking on it, but then the call came. They told us to go to Mumbai. We started, uh, we, did, we did an episode. Salman Khan really enjoyed our first episode in Mumbai. Yeah, we, hate Sajid Khan. we hate Sajid Khan. Mm -hmm. you know. Sajid Khan is not fit to be a judge at the show. At the yeah. show. We he hate has no idea about what he says. No one agreed with him when he spoke about us and about anybody. And just to let people know, his comments don't matter on the show. Exactly. <laughs> or maybe honestly speaking, we actually don't know whether it was for publicity or not. But we, it was portrayed in such a way that we really hated him. Or whatever. If he's a genuine guy, maybe he's genuine. God, God reasons. Nice suits. He has nice suits. Yeah, he has nice suits. He has nice suits. Has nice suits. Anyway, the other two judges, Sonali, Sonali Bendre and Kiran Khair, and Kiran Khair and, and, and they were very, yeah, very, very, nice nice. Nice. Were nice. very nice. So and Bindre even more than the judges, we interacted more with, with the group. The group. And they were amazing. Yeah. Amazing. We actually miss that about India's work. I mean, we miss. Going there what we miss most out. is hanging out with the crew and playing on that stage. Because we were people, we were the pe kind of people who would be totally restless. And when other people are like, they're locked inside a room and they would be like, okay, I have to go and do my stuff. And we would be like, okay, buying chocolates here and there, giving chocolates to the crew members mm -hmm. and you know, talking stuff. And the two yeah. best people in India's got talent who interacted with us a lot yeah. were Nikhil Chinappa and Aishwarya. Yeah. Yeah. They were amazing. They us a lot. Oh, they were. Funny story uh, is that uh, Salman Khan's brother Suhail Khan, he got my number from somebody in India's Got Talent and they were interested in our band since before he had just seen the Urvashi video that we had played and they were interested in our band. So I got text messages from Suhail Khan saying that, uh, you know, hi, I'm Suhail Khan and I want to, I, I want of your band. Do you guys play in Underground Authority? I was like, yes, I do. Have you heard of Salman, my brother? So we thought it, we thought it's a joke. Yes. And uh, we actually, I actually kept responding in a very rude manner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he called and I said, no, you know, it's a joke. You know, why are you guys joking? Or what are you joking? We don't, we, we don't. We we have, have, I've, I've never met. We to abuse, no? No, we didn't abuse. Thank no, uh, we, we, we went to an extent. I was like, extent. dude, one SMS is costing us dear yeah. rupiah. Okay, <laughs> stop joking. And so the last message from him was, get back when you're free or if you want to. And we didn't. 
we didn't, didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. We were like let the it be. The next morning, go. we meet the uh, creative director. She He's says, "So did Sohail call you?" So he Khan, Salman's brother, he took your number from me yesterday. I was like, oh crap! And then I called him up immediately and I apologized. And he was like, and then and then he was like, ah, yeah, it's okay. Go and meet my brother. He was like that. And then Salman, and then we were inside sleeping. Somewhere we took some sofas and we were sleeping. And suddenly someone comes in running and says, "Bhai ne bula hai," and we run out. And you're like, oh, bhai, oh my god, we're like washing our faces and stuff like that. We didn't know who was bhai. Everybody saying bhai. You're going and saying bhai, 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 bhai. Like, who is that? And then we suddenly go and we find there's this line of people forming a chain and stuff. And then Salman comes up, and we are like, we were frozen for a point of time. And this guy started sweating randomly. <laughs> He just sweat, sweat, sweat. That happened. And then Salman Khan comes. Shakes. I was unfortunately standing in front, closest to him. He comes. He shakes my hand and says, "So you were rude to my brother." That's the first thing he says. And I was like, "No, sir, sorry." It was like that. So we apologize, and he's sweating. He was still sweating. Uh, so he said, he said some really nice things. It was, it was phenomenal just to look at him because he stretches his hand out, and a pack of cigarettes come. He stretches his hand out, a lighter comes. It doesn't work. Another lighter comes. He clicks, you know, snaps his fingers, and there's a table, and there are chairs, and there's a fan. Suddenly, and there are chairs for us and everything. He takes out his phone. Somebody take, you know, dials a number, and it, he gives me his phone, like talk to him, and then turns out to be the owner of T series. Yeah. He takes out his phone, gives me another phone call. It turns out to be Sajid Dwajit, the music directors of Dabam. And you, and it was, it happened so fast. It was amazing. We didn't realize anything. Yeah. And the best time we had was. On stage when we played, and then Salman did this funny Salman Bhai did this did this really funny sequence with us, and we loved it. It was an amazing impromptu thing. Nothing was planned. Uh, another amazing moment that I can remember is when we played alongside the guitarist of. you can say one of the gods of rock scorpions rudolf shankar had come for this event in sikkim and uh, about footballers an event about football and rudolf shankar had come and uh, he had come alone with his guitar and he wa- he wanted to play a couple of songs and they contacted us and they told us that rudolf shankar wants to play and you know we want you guys to come and jam with him and we met him and it was it was a dream come true meeting some somebody whose music you've been listening to ever since you were 8 and then trying to play his songs all your life and then you finally meet the guy who made it and it was amazing and i myself i got to play lead guitars alongside him that was amazing and he appreciated what we did and we did not cover again then again underground authority because even in front of rudolf shankar i mean it took a lot of courage to tell him that we're going to you know change the song and make it our own way but then he really appreciated what we did we put rap uh, and hip hop into into rocky like a hurricane and we we did our own guitar playing we did our own stage act and he loved it he appreciated the way we played he appreciated the rap and that was an amazing experience i mean those 6 minutes on stage with him it's 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 a blur i can only remember when he ran into the field to play with us and when he gave that final jump to finish the song we all jumped together and then he was gone that those 6 minutes were amazing We're releasing two of our originals with artistsallowed.com, and and we're very happy because these songs they're a little different from the feel of the other songs that we have, and we didn't have a place to release them. Yeah, had had it not been for artistsallowed.com, because in this way of distributing music, an artist doesn't really have to compromise on their creativity. Uh, they don't have to follow any particular norms about the length of a song, about the kind of language you use in the song. about what topics you should write on so it's it's a good thing we 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 are talking about stuff that maybe uh, say xyz record company will say i don't want to release songs on these topics But to be very honest you know we want to release more music in this way we want to bring out more of our songs maybe singles just every singles, month we want albums, to release videos whatever singles videos albums through this process because this is how the world works now and and we are very very, very excited about it we're looking forward Oh, 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 oh,
Jesus.